I'm Dr. John. No, I'm not that kind of doctor. I'm a doctor of math. What does that mean? Well, pretty much I spend all day sitting here in my basement thinking up of really, really big numbers. But today, I'm going to be teaching you some math. We're going to be learning today about patterns. A lot of math is all about identifying patterns. Let's start with an example. Here's a pattern you probably know. One, two, three, four, five. It's the pattern of counting, counting by ones. One, two, three, four, five. What goes here? You know because you know the pattern. All right, that's a very simple example. We're going to be learning today about two more complicated examples of patterns. The first one is called Pascal's Triangle. Now that's a funny name for a pattern. Where does that come from? Well, it comes from a guy named Blaise Pascal. Blaise Pascal was a 1600s French mathematician and polymath. That's a pretty funny word, polymath. What does that mean? Well, let's look at the root words here, poly and math. Poly means many, and math is something that you learn, just like you're learning right now. So a polymath is someone that learned many, many different things. One of the things that Blaise Pascal learned and studied was what we call Pascal's Triangle. And it's actually a very important pattern in math. We won't be able to get into all the reasons why it's important today, but we can talk about how the pattern is built and how it's constructed. You start, just like with many good patterns, with the number 1. Now what I draw in red is not actually part of the pattern, but it's just meant to help show you how we're building Pascal's triangle. We're going to build this triangle from top down, and in each step we're going to be adding a row, and that row we're going to build from the row directly above it. So for this second row, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the 1, and we're going to bring it down into the left, and we're going to bring it down into the right. And when we bring it down into the left, we'll have a 1 here, and down to the right, we'll have a 1 here. And that is the second row of Pascal's triangle. Pretty simple. Let's build the next row. We'll do the same pattern. This 1 goes down into the left and down into the right, and this one also goes down into the left and down into the right. Something happens here in the third row. We have a collision. Both ones are going into the same spot, and when we have a collision in Pascal's triangle, we add the numbers together. So in this case, we have 1 plus 1, which is 2. Here, we have 1 because only this one gets brought down here, that's it. This one gets brought down here, and that's it there. And that's the third row of Pascal's triangle. Okay, now I'm going to stop drawing the arrows here. Remember, everything in red is not actually part of the triangle. It's just meant to show you what happens. And so for the fourth row, I'm going to take this one and bring it down here. Nothing happens to it. It's still just a one. In this spot here, I'm bringing the 1 down into the right, and I'm bringing the 2 down to the left, and they collide and make a 3. Same thing happens here. We have a 2 and a 1 making a 3. And then here we have just this 1 here gets brought down to the right, and that's what we have there. So this now is the fourth row. 1, 3, 3, 1 is the fourth row of Pascal's Triangle. Let's do one more. Okay. Again, this one gets brought down here. It stays as a one. Here we have a one and a three colliding to make a four. 
Here we have a 3 and a 3 colliding to make a 6. Here again a 4. And here finally a 1. One thing you'll notice in Pascal's triangle is there are a lot of patterns within the pattern. For example, the edges here will always be 1s. There are many other patterns you can see if you look along a diagonal, which is one of these down to the right or down to the left directions, you'll see lots of patterns forming within the triangle. Now we're going to look at one particular pattern, which you get when you add all of the numbers within each row. So let's start at the first one. If we add, there's only a single number here, it's just a 1, so that would go here. Here we have 1 plus 1, so the total is 2. In the third row, we'd have 1 plus 2 plus 1 for a total of 4. Let me know if you're seeing the pattern. In this row, 1 and 3 make 4, 3 and 1 also make 4, so 2 4s makes 8. Okay. In this row, 1 and 4 make 5, 4 and 1 also make 5. 5 and 5 makes 10. We've only left out the 6, so 10 plus 6 is 16. Okay, we could keep going, and you'll do that today. But maybe you're already starting to see a pattern. Think about it. And as you keep going, you'll see that the pattern keeps going as well. Okay, that's it for Pascal's triangle. But we are going to talk about another pattern, which also has to do with triangles. And these are the triangular numbers. Okay, let's start with some examples. Again, our pattern begins with the number 1. And I'm representing it with a single dot. And you'll see why in just a second. To represent the next triangular number, I'm going to draw three dots like this. Do you see the triangle? Those three dots form a triangle. And so my second triangular number is the number 3. Okay? For the next triangular number, this is what I'll do. I'm going to start with the three dots I had before. And I'm going to add three more dots along this diagonal here. Do you see how that makes another triangle? To make this, I used six dots in total. So the third triangular number is the number six. We'll do one more. Again, I'm going to start with my last triangular number of 6 and that triangle. And I'm going to add another diagonal to it, just like this. Do you see the triangle? And how many dots did I use? Well, I said I started with 6 and I added 1, 2, 3, 4 more. So I should have 10 in total, and you can double check. Now let's see if we can see another pattern within the pattern. I started with nothing. To get to my first triangular number, I had to add one dot. To get from my first to my second triangular number, I had to add two dots. To get from the, that number to the next one, 6 minus 3 is 3, which means I had to add 3 more dots. Are you seeing the pattern within the pattern? The next one, I had to add 4 dots. So you see, I add 1, and then I add 2, and then I add 3, and then I add 4, and then I add 5. 
Then I had six, maybe? Why don't you draw out the remaining triangular numbers and see if the pattern continues? Well, kids, that's it for me for today. I need to get back to adding up really, really large numbers. I hope you learned something, and now it's your turn.